that's not good. That's not good at all. Well, I guess I gotta sell that. Wait a second. Why would I sell that? In this episode, I'll be telling you why I won't be selling any of my stocks this week, so you can decide if it's the right decision for you and keep your hard-earned dollars from being flushed down the drain. That good. What's up world and welcome back to Bathroom Finance. This week was definitely a tough one on the market, but it's a good one to show early investors the benefits of dollar cost averaging. So I'll open my situation to you. My goal this year is to invest $52,000 in the stock market, but I didn't just have $52,000 laying around that I could dump in. So instead, I'll be investing pieces of my paycheck into the market each week. But let's just pretend I did have $52,000 to invest at the beginning of this year there'd really be two options for me. The first is lump sum investing, where I put the full amount into the market at one time. And the second would be dollar cost averaging, where I take the $52,000 and split it into equal amounts and routinely invest it into the market. Now Vanguard did a study on this decision and found that 66% of the time, lump sum investing gets a slightly better return. Which makes sense, you have more money gaining more interest for a longer amount of time. But what this study fails to mention is a very important piece of investing, and that's your emotions. It's important to limit the amount of regret you can feel in your portfolio so that you have the confidence to hold on to your investments as the market kicks up and kicks down. This week, it definitely kicked down. The S&P 500 dropped more than 12% in just five days. Now imagine that I just started investing and I put my full $52,000 in at the beginning of this year. I would have watched that investment drop by almost $5,000 in just five days. I don't know about you, but right about now I'd be thinking, what if the market keeps going down next week? The answer that most people have to this question is that they would short sell their stocks, which is when you sell a declining stock so you can scoop it back up at a lower price. But short selling tricks so many people into losses because you're gambling that the market will continue to go down. But if it goes up, then you'll have to buy all of those stocks back again at a higher price. Which is why for a lot of us, it's better to buy our investments for the long term and hold on. When the market declines, I've only lost money on paper. I only realize those losses when I actually sell my stock at a price that's lower than what I purchased it at. If I hold on to my stock and the market improves, then I never have to realize those losses at all. So that's why I'm not selling, but why am I actually buying more this week? Shouldn't I wait for the market to improve a little bit so that I don't lose more money if the market continues to decline? Well, that's the exact same gamble I'd be making short selling. I have no idea if the market's going to be up or down next week, but I do have the confidence that it'll continue to grow in the long run, which is why I continue to invest through dollar cost averaging. The way I see it is, if I believed well enough to buy these stocks last week, then they're actually at a 12% sale price this week, and I get more stocks for less money. Overall, dollar cost averaging is likely to give me slightly smaller returns in the future. However, it helped me keep my cool this week and limit my losses to less than $500 instead of $5,000. It also helped me resist the urge to sell short so I can keep my money invested for the long term. That's good. The final flush is a quick breakdown of my portfolio's progress and the investments that I'll be making this week. This year, I've invested $8,000, which has declined 6.62% over the last eight weeks and has generated $3.45 in dividends. This week, I'll be buying 20 shares of Zag to increase my bond holdings, two shares of TD to increase my financial holdings, four shares of Rogers to bump up those communications numbers, and four shares of VFV to track the S&P 500. As mentioned last week, Zag is a bond ETF with federal, corporate, and provincial bonds which has a dividend yield of 2.95% and an MER of just 0.09%. TD is a Canadian bank that has a dividend yield of 4.29%, which has grown consistently for the last nine years. Rogers is a Canadian communications company that has a dividend yield of 3.25%, which has been stable or growing since 2007. And VFV is a Canadian ETF which tracks the S&P 500, meaning I'll pay less in exchange fees. However, there are tax implications to owning a Canadian ETF that holds American stocks. So as always, you should do your own research before making any purchases so you can make sure you make the right investments for your portfolio. Now let's deposit $1,000 we use in next week's episode. And while we wait for that deposit to complete, 
Let me know if you'll be investing this week. And if so, what are you buying? All right, everyone, the bowl's refilled and I gotta run, so I'll see you on the next episode of Bathroom Finance.